Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. My website's jasonburnspreacher.com I just want to talk about violence in the Old Testament and the Muslim apologetic against that. Muslims at High Park are saying that God kills babies in the Bible and it's a load of rubbish if they quote the Old Testament so we don't listen to it. First of all, if you read 1 Corinthians 13, it talks about love. If you read 1 John, chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5 of 1 John, it talks about love. If you read uh, uh, John, chapter 13, it talks about greater love than this, that a man, that, that you love one another. So there's a lot about love in the New Testament. So when the Muslims start talking about violence in the Old Testament, you got to remember that we're living in in the time of Jesus Christ where he taught and his disciples about love there is no example of the disciples or any of the Lord's people going around killing people they went around preaching the gospel when they quote the sword passages where Jesus says I've not come to bring peace but a sword that's metaphorical it's not literal and the proof that it's not literal is when uh, Peter went to Cut, cut off the ear of the person who came to uh, arrest them in the guard at the garden of the Gethsemane. The Lord told him not to do that. You know that you'll die by the sword if you use the sword. So whenever the Lord mentioned sword, which was twice, it's only in a metaphorical sense. Okay. Now back to the Old Testament. Uh, if you go to Genesis chapter 15. Verse 16, it says, But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. The Muslims will bring to your attention that uh, Israel went in and killed babies. Here in this passage, it's saying that God is given the, the Amorites hundreds of years before he's going to judge them. He gave them 450 years, 400 years of they were slaughtering, killing babies, judge, uh, raping and all sorts of things for 400 years every generation kept doing it no generation repented the children were brought up in that way they lived in that way so God root and branch brought judgment on that culture and God has a right to do that and that is the background to the passages about God going God's people going in and slaughtering everything but also you got to remember that it's not as clear-cut as that because there were some families that were not killed, for example, Rahab and her family. So you've got to be careful in just uh, uh, saying it's black and white and that this is what it's saying. You know, you've got to take all scripture into context. Now, if you, the hypocrisy of the Muslims are, there is a, there is a hadith where Muhammad actually went and kissed the Torah. So the Muslims are criticizing the Torah for violence in it and yet Muhammad kissed the Torah and said that he respected it so as Muslims you're going against your own what I would say false prophet the next thing as well is there's more violence uh, in 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 the uh, Quran than it and, and teaches about violence where Christianity doesn't you know Muslims are trying to bring Christianity on under ceremonial law the ceremonial laws of, of Israel what eat what Israel did as a nation in terms of being the sword of God is not what we are the people of God today for we are under uh, a, a, a different way of, of living than the nation of Israel back then we don't come under the ceremonial law but Muslims are trying to bring us under the ceremonial law they're doing their apologetics criticizing us as if we're under the ceremonial law saying Jesus is under the ceremonial law no Jesus fulfilled the ceremonial law so that we didn't have to fulfill it so that we didn't have to do it he he took the punishment the judgment he fulfilled all the ceremonial law in his sacrifices in his sacrifice and in what he did for us so now we live in obedience to Christ in obedience to the Ten Commandments the moral law but we don't have to fulfill the ceremonial law because Christ has fulfilled it for us and we trust in him and he's and, and it's been abrogated because of his life. We learn from the ceremonial law in that we can learn spiritual lessons. But the ceremonial law is not for us. And what the Muslims are trying to do in their apologetics is constantly try to show, try to uh, sh uh, imply that the Bible, the New Testament and, and the whole Bible is really about ceremonial law. But the Bible is about grace and walking in the grace of God. 
That's what the Bible's about, and the Muslims completely misunderstand this in their apologetics and attack on Christianity. So, when you read the Quran, the Quran is a book that has gone back to the ceremonial law. So we, we have punishments like cut people's hands off. We have punishments like crucify people in war. We have passages where it constantly talks about violence and war. But then it goes beyond what the Bible says. The Bible in no way glorifies war, yet the Quran glorifies war. The Quran says that the best deed that you can do is to be a martyr in war. The Bible never says anything like that. The Bible never glorifies war, never says war is a, is a great virtue. It say, but the Quran is very clear that if you kill in the name of Allah, or if you die as a martyr, then this is the best deed that you can do. Okay? So, you know, Muhammad had people assassinated, Muhammad uh, had people uh, killed after battle and, and executed, uh, Muhammad uh, took over people's wives when their husbands were killed. Uh, in the Bible, when it talks about they go into the land and the women were captured, the women had marital rights, they had the rights of the Jewish women, if you read uh, Deuteronomy, they had rights. Uh, the, the Quran knows nothing of this uh, kind of uh, stuff. It, it, it's just a brutal, violent, evil book, basically. And so you can't compare uh, the Quran, you can't compare Muhammad to Christianity. Christianity is not under ceremonial law. It, uh, the Quran and Muslims, you've come under the ceremonial law and even gone a million times worse where you've glorified war, where you have things in there that are, are, are absolutely disgusting where you crucify your enemies which is taught in the Quran and you cannot compare the Quran to this the Quran cannot be compared to this you know all the Muslims when the Muslims start quoting uh, the Bible teaches killing of babies you want to just quote this passage and say show me in the Quran where there is a better passage than this. You show me Muslims in your Quran where there is a better passage than this. 1 Corinthians 13 If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or, is, or boast. It is not arrogant nor rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. When, when the perfect comes, the, the, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then, face to face, now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am being fully known. So now faith, hope and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love, my friends. The greatest of these things is love. That is what the New Testament teaches. The Quran does not teach that, my friends. I've got to go. God bless you and love to everybody out there.